Most of you probably don't know this about me, but I used to do TikTok. I posted this black swan makeup look for Halloween and it went viral a couple times. So I'm here today to give you guys a little tutorial on this OG viral black swan makeup look and two different outfit options. I was going through like my old TikToks and this black swan Halloween makeup look obviously came up. I was like, I have to bring this to YouTube. I created this look in 2021, I believe. And I've been doing this look pretty much every single year as like a side costume. Also important to note that I grew up dancing. I did Swan Lake a couple times actually. I don't think I ever played like Black Swan, but I did play lead White Swan. Wait guys, I totally lied. I did play Black Swan at one point. It was just contemporary. I have photos. Oh, look at me, it was so cute. Wow, she did so emo. I died. Those were the days. When I was making this look, I remember that I wanted to blend the theatrical nature of the black swan with like my dance ballet background and find harmony between the exaggerated black swan costume look and the classic timeless silhouette. So that's kind of the background on this look. Let's get started. I am going to use a lighter foundation. I want to have like a very pale, like sunken face. We're gonna do a heavy contour and a very pale face. We're gonna start with foundation. I always try to use a foundation that is a little bit too light for me for this particular look. It seems like this foundation actually matches me perfectly, but this concealer is way too light for me. So we're going to use that to wash me out. Next, we are going to go in with, this is the Mario contour stick in the shade medium. I'm going to be very generous with the contour. Most likely I will go in with multiple layers, but here's the placement. I'm going to use a brush to blend her out. I'm going to go in with layer number two, kind of centralizing it more under the cheekbones to really hollow out my face. Now we're gonna go in with concealer. I'm being very generous with everything. Here's the concealer placement. We have forehead, under eyes, nose, cheekbone, chin. I'm going to use a beauty blender to blend this out and some setting spray. I'm gonna go back in with more contour. We're gonna skip blush. We don't need blush. I wanna look dead, kind of. I'm gonna go in with some setting spray and I'm gonna let this completely dry. Now we're gonna go in with powder and we're gonna bake. First, I am going to lightly powder the places that I'm gonna bake before I go in with a bake. This is a pink powder. If I had it, I would be using a translucent powder or even a white powder. And now we wait. Once that's all set, I'm gonna brush it away. Now we're gonna go in with powder contour and set the cream contour that we did. And also just like pack on the powder contour. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with some powder highlight. For the powder highlight, I am using more of like a yellow-ish highlight to not add too much color to the face. And the base is done. Now for the fun part the eyes. You're going to need a black liquid eyeshadow. I have been using this Suva Beauty Hydra Liner for four years now. This is water activated. It's very versatile because you just need a brush and you can do whatever. You can also use like a flat brush and really pack it on, which is what we're gonna be doing today. Then you're gonna need a black gel liner. This one is the e.l.f. No Budge Retractable Liner. And then we're gonna need a black eyeshadow. This is a smile box palette that I've had since I was like in high school, but you can use whatever you have. We're just going to start. Actually, wait, do you guys want to be zoomed in? 
I think that would actually be a good idea. Also, this look would probably be a good time to start with the eyes. I just always start with my base and I clean up any mess after. This look will get a little messy. So if you want to do the eyes before the base, that's totally an option, but I don't like doing that. So I'm not doing that. Anyways, we're gonna start with black eyeshadow. I'm keeping it centered on my eyelid for now because you can always add more. When you're working with a color like black, it's really difficult to subtract. Start small and you can layer. I'm just gonna take it down to my lower lash line. Then I'm gonna take my gel eyeliner and fill in the blanks basically. So my waterline needs to go. I'm gonna take my black liquid eyeliner and pack it on. And then I'm gonna set it again with powder. It like does not have to be clean at all. We can start taking it out into like a little wing cause we're gonna use this space. Okay, did I mention you need one of these like, one of these kinds of brushes? If you're using an eyeliner like this, you're gonna need a nail detail brush. That's what these two things are. We're gonna use the detail brush to start to create like feather strokes. You don't need to be precise with this at all. I'm also gonna create like an inner corner. I'm pretty much making these feathers all around the eye. Once you're kind of happy with the way it looks, you're done. And it's time to do the other eye. Also, no fallout. Kind of impressed. I did this look on my friend and I don't know why, but like every single time that I do her makeup, there's so much fallout. But every time I do my makeup, there's typically not fallout. I don't know why that is. I don't do anything different when I do her makeup versus when I do my makeup. But for some reason, there's always fallout when I do her makeup. Going in with that gel and then going in with a layer of liquid and then going in with more black eyeshadow and setting taking the shape out a little bit i'm using two different lengths of these brushes to make the feathers because the strokes have different weight depending on the length of the brush it creates a little bit more dimension for the feathers and that is the eyeshadow the last couple steps are just mascara and eyebrows and a lip for lashes I'm using the telescopic mascara by L'Oreal. I'm just gonna do my mascara the way that I like. You can obviously add fake lashes if that's something that you want to do, but I personally don't like to deal with those. For brows, I'm using the Benefit Brow Setter. Just do your regular brow routine. For the lip, I've been debating if I want to do a red lip or just like a pale pink. For the last Ever since I made this look, I've done a pale pink because there's already so much going on with the eyes and I kind of want the attention to stay on the eyes. But you know in the Swan Lake movie, I think she does a red lip. Let me check. Yeah, she does kind of like a darker bloody red. Maybe I'll just try it out and then see. I think if you want to go for something a little bit more theatrical, a little bit more exaggerated, the red is good for that. If you want to lean into the movie, the Black Swan movie, the red look I think is appropriate maybe even a deeper red than this i think i prefer the pink lip so i'm gonna do that for the red i use this color pop lippy pencil the color is beverly bungalow and that is the makeup look so for hair i'm just doing a classic slick back bun like ballerina bun i don't really know how to give a tutorial on this but i'll do my best because i've gotten so many questions on how i do my slick back bun keep in mind like i've been doing fucking slick back buns since i was literally two years old because that's when i started dancing so it's kind of like muscle memory for me like i don't know exactly how to explain it there's probably a million other tutorials on how to do a slick back bun on the internet that are going to be way better than mine i'm using eco gel this is the gel that I use. I would also use hairspray, but I don't have any hairspray right now. Gel in hair. Gelling up all around my hair, like the backside too. And then taking just a regular brush. I'm kind of just guiding my hair into what will become a ponytail. 
I also like to use water. Forming the ponytail, adjusting according to my preferences on how I want this to look. I know there's like that hack where you leave the two pieces out and then you make a ponytail and then once you've made the ponytail, you put the pieces in. I've never done that. I've never tried. If that's how you would rather do it, obviously that is what you can do. Oh my God, I think I need to zoom in. Okay. <laughs> so I start by kind of brushing my hair down and then into my ponytail. In order to get that like nice shape, I like overshoot it when I'm putting it into my hair and then I go right here and I like lift it back up. And that way also I can slowly start to bring my ponytail higher up on my head. And I just kind of repeat that process until I like the shape that my hair is in and I like the height of my ponytail on my head. I hope that makes sense, you guys. Like I really don't know. Now that everything looks kind of nice to me, I'm gonna go in with my like fine brush, the one that's gonna really make that super snatched slick. I'm gonna wet it first. And then I'm just gonna smooth everything out. Now everything looks good to me. I'm gonna take my hair ties. I have to use two hair ties because my hair is so thick. And there's the ponytail. Before I do my bun, I wanna fix this a little bit. So I go back in with more gel and make sure she's super secure. And then I use some water and do the same thing. And then I kind of bring the water and the extra gel like onto my ponytail so that when we do do the bun, there's not like as much hairs sticking out of the bun. Then take my brush again and re-slicking everything. And you do this before you do the bun because you're essentially like pushing all the hair bubbles like back towards your ponytail. And if you do it when you've already done the bun, they're gonna be more visible. When you do it before you do the bun, when you do your bun, it will cover them up. Now for the bun, I'm gonna turn around so you can see what I do. It's really easy, you just loop around and then I kind of tuck the tail under the loop and then I take a hair tie and secure it. Make it more secure and more even. I put like a bobby pin wherever I feel like it's sticking out and needs to be put down a little bit. I'm gonna put another one like up here. And there you go, the Valerie Devon. If I'm feeling extra, I'll take a little toothbrush with some gel on it and reshape the way that my hair is laying in front so that it's a little bit more flattering to my face. I hope that made sense. Lastly, for the outfit, I have two options. So here we have option number one. All of these things I already had in my closet, so I've had to spend zero money on this costume. And that's kind of the point when I'm making like a side costume that's not my main costume for the year. For me, this has always been a side costume because I've always kind of had these pieces in my closet. It's been super easy for me to kind of put this stuff together. So for option number one, we have something that's very ballet. This is a Leo that I've already had. I don't remember the brand, unfortunately. I am adding a little skirt, a little warm up skirt. I never was into the super long skirt because I always felt like it made my legs look super short. I always preferred a little short skirt when I was doing my bar warm up. And then I have these leg warmers. They're actually not even leg warmers, they're arm warmers, which came with this shirt that I bought like a long time ago and you're meant to wear them like this, but I hate that. So I've kept them and I use them as leg warmers. And then for shoes, I have these platform satin shoes that are super fucking dusty because I haven't worn them in like a year. Just have to get the bust off of them. Basically, I just put the leg warmers over the heel and scrunch them up a little bit. And this is the first option. And option number two. Honestly, these two are so fucking similar. This one is just like a dress. This one's like normal clothes. And I already have this dress in my closet. I think the biggest thing for this costume is the makeup. This is such an easy costume and you can absolutely use things that you already have in your closet. This dress is from IMG. I thought it was really good because it's that like chiffon kind of material. Anything that's like flowy, black obviously would be perfect for this costume. Oh wait, oh my god, earrings, hello. If we're thinking about what a ballerina wears on stage, it's actually nothing or something like this. This is the final look. 
makeup, hair, and outfit. I love you. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was helpful. If you do this look, please let me know. Send me photos or tag me. I have a roster of Halloween looks that I want to do this year. I just, fingers crossed, I have the time to do them and post them before Halloween. Have an amazing spooky season until the next time I see you. Did that even make any sense? So most of you may not. <sighs> and during that time, I shared some. Happy Halloween! Oh, God. <sighs> um. Anyways, which is why ultimately I think is why.